Can I clarify on army numbers? You said in the room there you don't think, you don't anticipate the army will be smaller. Um, so will the planned cuts to the army go ahead or are you talking about rumours of, of extra ones on top of those? I'm talking about rumours of extra cuts. Uh, so I think we're, yeah, again, I think some things are reasonably fixed. So the government's made announcements about the size of its armed forces, the, the money available for the armed forces, some of the major programmes for the armed forces, and within those, we're looking to see how we hone and refine and what adjustments we make to, to maintain our strength as, as the UK's armed forces, but to be even stronger in the future. So planned army cuts will go ahead as, as planned, but there won't be any more, you can guarantee that? So my, my expectation is that planned cuts will go ahead. I don't, my job is not to give guarantees. I follow the government's line on this, and the government's been really clear about the size of its armed forces and where we currently are. The Defence Secretary has been in Kyiv. Um, what can you tell us about the significance of his visit this time? This is one of a series of regular visits that Ben Wallace undertakes. I was there about three weeks ago. That was my fourth visit to Ukraine since the invasion. Um, and so it's not especially significant. It's part of a continuing pattern of support to Ukraine, both now and in the long term. And what can you tell us about what was announced recently in terms of the UK training Ukrainian pilots? What's the latest with that and when will it start? So the, the, the expectation is that lots of countries will come together in order to train the, the, the cohort of future pilots for Ukraine. And within the UK, we do English language training at Beaconsfield. We do some of the ground work and the, 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 the figures and the understanding of what it is to be an aviator at, at Cranwell and other bases. And then they'll be participating with basic elementary flying training um, and, 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 and going through what people would anticipate if they were joining the, the Royal Air Force as, as a pilot. So that's, but those details still have to be worked through and how do we dove that together with other nations? Uh, and then what are the numbers and when will it start? Those, those we haven't announced yet uh, and we're working that through now. What can you tell us about what we can expect from the Defence Command paper? And the Prime Minister said that he's not going to second-guess commanders in terms of decisions being made uh, on cuts. So um, how empowered do you feel to actually make decisions uh, when it comes to the Defence Command paper without interference from Whitehall? So we're working with the Secretary of State for Defence and the Minister for the Armed Forces, who's got a particular responsibility to pull together the Defence Command paper. Some elements are, 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 are fixed, so the, the, we've got the money that we're going to have over the next few years. We've got the clarity of an integrated review 2023, so a refresh from the document in 2021, and that talked about continuing to be a really strong power within NATO, continuing to be a really strong nuclear power, and also wanting to be even stronger in terms of science, and, and our operational edge that we get from being a strong science power. And then we take that into defence and, and look to see what does that mean in terms of individual programmes. So additional money for nuclear and making sure that we're even stronger uh, as, a, as, a, as a nuclear power. We're then looking at you know, some of the modernisation agenda. Do we need to take a little bit more risk? Um, and, 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 and as I was say, saying it as part of this conference, yeah, buy drones much more quickly and look to team drones with the existing kit that we've got. Do we also need to respond to some of the people aspects? We've had a big review into people called the Haythonthwaite Review. That's got a series of recommendations. We are in a fight for talent. And so how do we look after our people even better than we currently do? How do we attract people to join the armed forces even better than we currently do? The UK armed forces are strong and we maintain our strength by having the confidence to adjust and change and to shape for the future, and that's what we're trying to do. The expectation is that the Defence Command paper will be announced publicly in June. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.